If this is something you do on a golf course, then all I can say is I hope I never get stuck behind you. Yes, it's old school and I love a bit of retro, but I'm also an advocate of letting technology help. I mean, imagine trying to work out a yardage using this technique and then multiply it 18 times. There are several issues which will be detrimental on your ability to improve your golf. And today I will show you that if you don't use a device to help you work out exact yardages, you are causing a lot of problems for yourself. I will also reveal a secret hack that will make sure when you do start to work out the correct yardages, you will get closer to the flag than ever before. Right, so based on my little uh, old school method there, 221 minus the 13 yards that I've allowed for, that gives us a 208 to the flag is what I'd be working with right now. Now I can barely see the flag by eye because it's hidden away in amongst the bushes. It's actually playing 221 to where that flag position is, which must be at the back end of the green. So we're without doubt, using this method, not only am I taking a whole lot of time, and that group on the tee is telling me to hurry up and get a move on, I've just learned that I'm a club out with using this old school guesstimate method. Now Sigmund are the sponsors of today's video, and I'll talk to you in detail about that a little later. And before you start whinging like a bunch of old women, or men, no one's gonna accuse me of being sexist. This sponsorship means you get a huge discount code and a secret hack all in one video. I am the gift that keeps on giving. Now it's easy to realize the importance of knowing the right number to a flag, but there are also many other reasons why you need a device like this to help plot your way around a golf course. Course management can reduce your handicap significantly and it's got nothing to do with improving your swing. And this is how to use a rangefinder to make the right on course decisions. Right, so we've left ourselves short of that bunker. We played about a 180 shot. So the flag is showing 94 to the flag. But now I'm gonna switch on the slope compensation because as you can see, that's severely uphill. And we add six yards. So that means the club I choose is gonna be obviously the club I would play 100 yards and not one that is 94. And if you get that wrong, there's a serious issue that you could come up short and we all know what happens with that kind of slope your ball's going to come whizzing back to you. So for me, what I would choose now is something that plays maybe 105 or a little bit more and make sure I go past the flag. Right, so now we can commit to the shot knowing we're confident in our distance and that slope hill compensation. Okay, it's right on line. Oh, and absolutely perfect, to be honest with you, flighted just a little bit lower, but the yardage was spot on. And I would think that there's every chance that's not too far from the flag. And if anything, and we'll go and check it out, I think it might just gone a little bit further past it, which is exactly the way we intended to play the hole. Right, so the complete opposite of what we just faced, uh, downhill, elevated tee position, par three, and I would imagine it's going to make probably a club difference, I would guess, but we're going to work out again with slope compensation switched on what the kind of difference is in yardage. Now, this is really a key point. You're not allowed to use slope compensation in a competition. So if you play on a Saturday morning in a medal, you've got to have that switched off. So what's the point of having it? Well, for me, this is the key. You play this hole in your practice rounds or your midweek friendly with your mates or wherever it is, and you start to work out what the kind of difference it makes, that elevation. So when you come to play the comp on a Saturday, you can make that deduction yourself. You might even want to make a few notes if you take life really seriously. So for me, right now, we're looking at 126 to the flag, and then it's suggesting we take seven yards off that to allow for this elevated position. So we're playing, what is it, 119. Uh, there's zero breeze to worry about, so all we've got to do is select our 120 club. We can commit again, and then it's down to you. Can you execute a golf shot or not? That's a really well-struck ball. Is it going to move in a bit more? Come in a tad. Oh, we've just managed to leave ourselves a bounce right into the bunker. A decent enough strike and judging by where the ball would have pitched if I had just uh, managed to get it a little bit further left 
that again was perfect yardage. Now just a quick thought on that hole and the club selection that I made and how my course management wasn't too clever. I had all the information that I needed. I could have zapped all the bunkers on the screen and got more information than just 120 to the flag. Now I landed pin high and went into the bunker that we can't quite see. That's just uh, well, it's to the right side of the flag. There are four bunkers on this hole. There's one there, the one I went in, one behind you and one to my right. Now then, I can zap all of those four bunkers and what I can soon realise is there's a whole lot of green at the back side of this flag that is empty and void of trouble. So what I should have done was not played that 120 yardage, I should have played a 130, maybe a 135 yardage and took all that trouble out of the equation. And that's where using a rangefinder, a GPS device, a measuring device of some sort can be a huge help to your course management and equally it's going to help you lower scores. So this video is sponsored by Sigmund which means I'm duty bound to say nice things about their rangefinder and this could be deemed as being biased so I'm going to make this nice and simple in my appraisal of the Sigmund CT1000. This rangefinder does the following. And this is the Bushnell Pro X3 Plus, and as far as I can see, has exactly the same spec. The Bushnell is £549 and the Sigmund is £109. Now, when you have the two products that perform the same way, but over £400 difference, I don't think you need to be biased to work out which one I would recommend over the other. Oh, and on screen now is a discount code which makes that Sigmund CT1000 even lower than the 109 I just quoted. There's also a link in the video description that'll take you straight to the Amazon page. Right, the moment you've all been waiting for, how this device is going to help save you shots on your round, and I guarantee it, it's a hack that is... You'll think it's fairly obvious, but I bet none of you are doing it, and uh, it's quite simply... Let me get a yardage... Right, so we've got 150 to this flag. I've got slope compensation on. There's zero effect on this shot. Now, 150, I would say that I'm grabbing a seven iron in most cases. If I hit my seven iron as good as I can, um, then I'm probably gonna hit around the 150 marker. But what if I don't quite get it right? Then the chances are that's gonna fall short. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to suggest that every time you step up to a yardage, 150, 160, 170, whatever it is, I want you to go one club stronger in the bag. So in this case, I'm going to choose a six iron and not a seven, because you've got to ask yourself this question. When you play golf, when your mates play golf and when you watch them, how many times do any of those golfers go past the flag? And I'll bet you, in most instances, most golfers come up short more times than they go long. So what I'm hoping is by choosing six, if I absolutely flush it, worst case scenario, I go past the flag, I'm on the backside of this green, I can live with that. If I get my shot in and around sort of 80, 90% of what I can do, then the chances are I'm pin high. But I've just taken away a real issue that is potentially a threat to my score if I choose seven iron and don't get the shot spot on. Yeah, again, we've got that right on the flag. This could be really good. Oh, and the interesting thing is from that, it's not only it was a really good shot and I got it there, I was really comfortable with the strike. That was a six iron and that still came up what I would think looks a yard or two short. So what a good decision it was to go up a club. And even though I struck that as pretty good, but again, one of the major things that it changes is that by going up a club, you'll also find you'll swing a little bit easier because you're comfortable with that, that you've got that distance covered within that club by stepping up a little bit. So your rhythm, your tempo, everything will be improved just by that one simple decision in terms of course management.